Hi all, this is Skate, and this is the Tier 9 British Tank Destroyer, the Tortoise. I really like this tank. It's up there for me with the T-30 and the Jagdtiger. In fact, statistically, I perform better in this in terms of things like average damage than I do in my T-30, which I absolutely adore. But yet this thing doesn't get a lot of love, and it's not favoured by a lot of players, and that's because it can be very challenging to play. But for me, she's a keeper, and this thing is all about angles and the armour profile and trying to manipulate that. So the first thing I'm going to look at in a little bit of depth is the armour layout. And we're going to start by looking at it from the perspective of a tier 9 average heavy tank. And you can see the sides when you angle like this, you cannot pen, the fronts you can. This thing has very, very good gun arc, and realistically you want to be using that to the absolute maximum. When you use the gun depression and the gun arc, it becomes a little bit more troll. From the perspective of a medium tank at tier 9, it's ridiculously troll. Anything with 240mm of penetration and below, this tank is challenging to penetrate when you use the full gun arc, and you use the full gun depression, which is what you need to do in this thing. Anything between 240 and 270, it's touch and go. And anything with 270 plus, well, it looks like this. In other words, if it's an enemy tier 9 or tier 10 tank destroyer, there's a high probability they're going to penetrate you. I want to show an example, a bit of tortoise on tortoise action. He's shooting up at me, which makes me ridiculously well angled. I'm shooting down on him, which makes him absolute child's play to penetrate. Also, when you're using the full gun depression, it makes the hatch on top much harder to hit, and a harder small target. As with his hatch, on the other hand, is child's play to hit, because I'm shooting down on it. So this sort of engagement, it's win-win for the tortoise who is on the higher ground. Also, this next game, it's quite funny, actually. <laughs> I don't know how I survived this. But I'm about to get ransacked and rushed by pretty much the entire enemy team. And I get my fair share of damage done, but more than anything, I want to show what it's capable of when you are trying to angle at the best of your abilities. In perspective, this thing has 20 degrees of aiming arc to the left and 20 degrees of aiming arc to the right. You need to be using that to its full potential, it maximises the armour, so that's the easiest way of remembering it. As long as you're using it at the absolute maximum you can of an angle, it makes you a very hard target. Even better if things are shooting up at you. The more of your gun depression you can use, the better. And again, remember, the more gun depression you use, the smaller and the more challenging that hatch on top is to hit. Another key rule, very simply, never sit still between your shots. Even things like the Death Star or the Jagdtiger, things with high penetration. The likelihood is they're going to penetrate you. However, when you're angling up to the best of your abilities and you're constantly on the move, they're going to hit those red patches every now and then, which increases your survivability. If you sat still to something like the E4 then, he would have penetrated us without fail. However, when we're using the full angling, left, right, wiggling, he's going to hit those spots twice now. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand how I'm still alive either. This is just bonkers. <laughs> but this is what I mean. If you're angling, it really can make all the difference to this tank. And you see so many of these tanks just sitting still. And the reason you see them sitting still is because it's only got a 6.49 second reload. So they just wait in between shots. But if you're waiting in between shots, you are going to get penetrated without fail. And we do eventually die from a shot to the rear, not to the front. <laughs> yeah, we just pretty much held off the entire enemy onslaught with the tortoise. Also, I am well aware many of you think I say tortoise in a funny way. Um, it's just the way we call it from Wales, I guess, or the UK even. Some people call it a tortoise. A uh, tortoise? A tortoise? But my entire life, it's tort -oi -s, So it's a tortoise. Um, <laughs> you have no idea how many times I see that in the comments section of my videos. I don't take it offensively, it's actually quite funny how people say the same thing in a different way, purely because of accent. 
Anyway, slight tangent there. <laughs> um, yeah, that game is a loss. But I wanted to include it because it gives a very, very nice example of how you can manipulate the armor. And we still managed to do over 4,000 damage. In fact, if I wasn't so stupid as to get... And it is my own fault. If I didn't get shot by that Death Star early on, I would have had the hit points to survive that rush by all the other tanks. Which is now the beauty of replays. I strongly recommend, even if it's a bad game, you watch back your own replays. You learn so much from just looking at your own mistakes and then going, yeah, I know for future reference to try and pay attention to that. It can make tremendous differences. Also, when you die, rather than go, noob team, blame everybody else, go back and watch the replay. You'd be surprised how many mistakes you make in your own gameplay. I do it all the time, and I like seeing where I've gone wrong. At the end of the day, if we don't know where we've gone wrong, we don't know how to make it right. But, back onto the tortoise. Now, we've mentioned the armor layout. You've got that hatch on top. People do aim for the hatch a lot. And again, when you're moving in between your shots, it makes it a harder target. Sadly, that's the only things you can do to reduce the factor of that thing being hit, is using the full gun depression, using the full gun arc, and moving in between shots. That's all you can do, because everything can penetrate that hatch on top. An alternative is to hide the right-hand side of the tank. However, as a personal preference, I actually try to avoid it and give the hatch as something to bait at. Because when you're constantly moving around, you'd be surprised how many people miss the shot on that hatch by trying to shoot at it when you're moving. That's a personal preference thing, though. If you've literally just walked into the tortoise in the last few games, Try and hide the right-hand side of the tank, that may help. And then once you're comfortable and confident in manipulating the armor to your advantage, quite simply, don't bother, use it as a nice baiting tactic. As well as manipulating the armor, the very, very, very key important factors to this tank is remembering what sort of penetration other enemy tanks have. And as I mentioned earlier, anything with 240 or below, you can be 100% confident in your armor. Anything 240 to 270, I'd start to be concerned, and you really need to rely on angling a lot at that point. And anything above, really, it's probably going to penetrate. You'll get lucky if you have a lot of wiggling on the go, and they sometimes hit some of the red spots, because even to the tanks with huge penetration values, there are red spots on this tank. But the only way to get them to hit it is by wiggling. Secondary to that is the gun. Now, this has one of the best guns in the game by a long margin. And I do mean a very long margin. It's got huge DPM. In fact, one of the best in the game. Slightly below the Jagdtiger. Jagdtiger has 3,996. This thing with a rammer has 3,701. However, this thing has that glorious, glorious hesh with 120 millimeters of penetration and 515 alpha. Combine that with a 6.49 second reload, which is a 9.25 rate of fire, and a 1.64 second reload, a 0.28 gun dispersion, 10 degrees of gun depression, and 20 degrees left, 20 degrees right of gun arc, you have a glorious gun, and it is, it's glorious. But I put it secondary to the armor in this video. Same as I did on the Jagdtiger, because although both of these tanks have ludicrous DPM, your DPM is irrelevant and invalid if you can't survive. Because these things aren't ludicrous DPM with high alpha shots. They're ludicrous DPM with fast rate of fire. I mean, the Jagdtiger has 460 alpha, this has 400. Yet this has a faster rate of fire. Jagdtiger with a rammer is 6.91. This, just under half a second quicker, 6.49. So when I'm in a game, I will try my hardest to maximize the armor as best I can to try and survive to get the maximum use out of that DPM. And once you've got that part of this tank down, Everything else just falls into place. Mobility sucks, by the way. Uh, top speed is just abysmal. 
20 kilometers per hour. <laughs> it's not good in the slightest. But you can pretty much do 20 kilometers per hour on any terrain. And then the traverse speed only 22 degrees, which is not the greatest. But I do think this is a challenging tank for a medium to circle because you've got that massive 40 degrees in total gun arc. So that 40 degree gun arc combined with that traverse speed means you can swing this thing around very quickly. And it's heavy, so if there is something near you, as long as you've got hard cover, as with all turretless tank destroyers, you can pry it off you. I actually think medium tanks and light tanks are the bread and butter of this tank. And the reason I say that is because they struggle against the armor of this tank. Yet you can out DPM them all day long. And even better, you can reliably use your Hesh against mediums and especially light tanks. And then you have 4,764 DPM. <laughs> That's a lot of DPM. Yeah. 120 millimeters of penetration, which is why it works so well against mediums and light tanks. But then if you look at the Yag Tiger, it's got 5,200 DPM, but only 65 millimeters of penetration with the HE. This thing has 120, and it works so well, and the module damage it can cause is catastrophic. Now you could slap on calibrated shells and get 132 millimeters, and 272 with the AP instead of the 259 with the AP. Personally, I stick with a rammer. I also use the gun lane drive, V stabs, and I use the extra armor. And the APCR, 326 millimeters if you need it. You rarely need it anyway, but it's a nice amount. Also, check this shot out. You'd think one in a million shot, but not in the tortoise. The tortoise can pull shots off like that surprisingly reliably. And yes, you can get called hacker and things like that for pulling shots like that. Because they think they're hidden well behind a wall and all of a sudden a tortoise manages to loop some crazy shell in. It's not uncommon. Now, got a comment on the gameplay quickly here. There's three of them left, there's three of us left. There's going to be two of us left and they're going to be very cross with me for pushing after this IS-8 first. However, the reason I'm pushing after this IS-8 first is there's two behind me and there's an IS-8 in front of me. The second I turn around to try and help the friendly on my team, this is going to have very comfortable, happy shots on my butt. So I was after the IS-8 first. He ran away a lot quicker than I expected, though. So now I can turn around because the IS-8 is not going to be directly on my butt and I need to address these guys very, very quickly. Thankfully... I have the DPM to do it. Also, against medium tanks like that, as I've already mentioned, armor ridiculously reliable. I can afford to take a shot off him, but even so, it bounces. <laughs> and then, we're not even going to bother aiming at the IS-8, we're just going to splash a Hesh onto him and finish him off. But yeah, that's something you can address sometimes, is unhappy team players who think you're not helping. What they forget is how damn slow this tortoise is, which pretty much means you can't always get to the positions to help as quick as people would like you to. So positioning, I like to try and push up and help the mediums first. Like I said, your bread and butter is against those medium tanks as long as you can keep them off your back. And then you can work down the big nasty tank destroyers and heavy tanks without their flanking support of the mediums. But yeah, hopefully you can see from the last few games what I mean by just angling the tank at certain positions really does increase the chance of a bounce. Even if you're on the flat, don't just point your tank at someone, point it slightly to the left or to the right. That's exactly what we're going to do in this last game. Uh, the usual drill, guys, everybody plays across C. But just sticking out from a building, you're going to get obliterated. I'm going to be sitting on the right-hand side of the building, which means my machine gun port on top is going to in theory be a big target however we're going to try and use the maximum gun arc at the same time and in doing so by constantly moving and ducking back in between shots you're baiting shots at that hatch yeah they'll get the occasional one but again you'd be surprised how many miss or hit your armor and bounce as a result 
Also in this one, we can give a nice example of how to try and pry someone off your rear, or try to decide which targets to focus on, because that's also an important thing as well. So yeah, first things first, the usual let's shoot across C situation. While this is going on at the start of the replay, um, let me answer another question, or give my opinion rather than answer on another question. Something a lot of people say is, shall I get the Yang Tiger or the Tortoise, or which one shall I keep? Personally, I kept both, and the T-30, because they are all fantastic machines. Now, for a straight answer in terms of which is better, I'd say the Yang Tiger is easier to use the armour, and it has the higher DPM and the higher penetration on its AP. Yet, of all the games I've personally played, I have more than 300 average damage higher in the Tortoise, and I think that's because... Hesh. <laughs> And I think it's more workable with the accuracy and being able to pull shots off with that. People also don't expect you to reload as damn fast as you do. So yeah, YAG I think is more workable in terms of armour. It's easier to manipulate the armour on the YAG. You just hide as much as you can and the top is a hard target. In terms of this, it's not as easy as that, but yet, although the Yag has the higher DPM, I prefer the gun on this. It just has so many more quirks to it, so many more advantages to it. The elevation's better, the depression's better, accuracy. Aim time is like 0.2 seconds slower, but eh, it's nothing. But then, like, your gun arc is twice the size of that on a Yag, which means you can swing that gun much quicker. Which, with something like a gun arc that good, you can't help but ask, well, why not run a camo net? Because you shouldn't sit still in this thing. <laughs> Regardless how good the gun arc is, it stops you moving your hull, which means you can keep the camo value. But the hull needs to be moved to maximise the armour. You'll notice, so far I ignored this IS-3 behind me. And look how easy it is to squeeze him off me. We go up the ridge, he tries to stay as close as he can behind me. I take one from the ST-1. But, I'm not concerned, I have the hit points to survive it, and this guy is going to be addressed quickly. Trying to decide where to go for the ST or the Tortoise, I decide to swing around for the ST. Fraction too late, someone else gets the kill, and here comes the Tortoise. I am a one-shot, he was not a one-shot, he's bounced on me, and we are going to ninja the kill. So that's the end of the game on that one. In short, guys, Tortoise, I really really like this thing doesn't get a lot of love from a lot of players but those who like this tank adore it it's because they found their niche they found their way to work it and once you've got it on the tortoise you just love it yeah you can still have awful games i had a zero damage game earlier today <laughs> i have no shame in saying that either it happens thankfully rarely but it happens and if anyone says they don't, well, they're lying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, end of that game, 4,744 damage done and three kills. That gained us our mastery in this tank and we also had a steel wall. And we did receive a fair amount of bounces, actually. Also remember, some of the ones which are counted as penetration aren't necessarily penetrating causing damage. Penetrating and damaging the tracks, but not damaging the tank, so using your tracks to absorb it, is classed for some reason here as a penetrating hit. Because without damage, doesn't refer to hit points, it refers to damage to modules as well. But yeah, that's it for this video, I hope you have enjoyed it, thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye bye!